Let's talk about variables in MATLAB and Octave. Variables store information such as a number, an integer, a string, and it's a way to store variables so that you can use them later to do calculations as in equations or other types of uses. So let's say we wanted to store uh, or set the temperature for our egg that we're going to be hatching. Okay, it looks that kind of looks like a potato, but uh, anyway, here's our egg, and we want to maintain that, let's say, at 37.5 degrees Celsius, for example. So we could, in, in Octave or MATLAB, we can define a new variable called egg, and then give it a number. Okay, 37.5. So what this is doing is it's saying, take the expression on the right hand side of the equation and go ahead and assign that value to what's on the left hand side. Now for those coming from other programming languages you don't necessarily have to define what type of variable this is going to be before you define it. And in fact egg could be changed to be a character array, a string, an integer, um, and any type. So those types are dynamic. The type of variable can change from assignment to assignment. It can be redefined. Okay, so let's go ahead and just jump in with some examples. Now if you'd like to follow along, here is the GitHub archive. We're running MATLAB or Octave through a Jupyter uh, Lab notebook. And what I'm going to do here is I have temp uh, 99.2. Okay, let me just go ahead and change this just for the example to 37. Now, I can say, uh, you know, what type of variable is this? And that's going to tell me that it's a double. All right, if I type class and then whatever is there, that, um, that tells me what type of variable it is. But now I want to maybe convert it to an integer. And so the way to do that, let's say I do itemp equals, and I do int. 32 for a 32 bit integer, and then I can put temp in there. Okay, that's going to round it off to the nearest whole number. All right, and I can also do something like a 64 bit. Okay, and there are a couple other types of integers as well. So if I look at the type of variable now, you can see that's going to be an int 64. Whereas before, temp, um, and if I do class for temp, I have that it's a double precision. Okay, so uh, what I can do as well is just redefine that. Okay, where I've defined temp and the temperature here, and you can see they are different types. All right. So I'm going to go with double precision now. Basically the same thing as integer, but just some decimal points after it stores it up to something called machine precision. So there's just a certain number of decimals that we can go out to. Let's just see how far that goes. Okay, now it's just displaying that many. We can actually display more if we'd like to, but just the internal representation it's going to be out to about here or so. Uh, so the number of digits that it can store. All right, so uh, let's look at strings or characters. All right, uh, those are things like, you know, hi or um, other things that are going to be characters. Okay, they're not numbers. You can even store numbers as a string. So for example, 39. Uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at that. And if we look at the class of greeting, okay, that's a character array. So if I add these together, for example, I could say greeting um, and then another number, which is going to be 42. And then I can add those. If I try to add them together, I'm going to get uh, something a little bit unexpected. Okay, I'm going to get um, the character values as numbers. I'm going to convert it and then add 42 to it. 
All right, so I don't want to do that. Maybe I want to convert this. Okay, with string to number. And then I add it together to get 81. So I'm adding those together as numbers. So it's very important that you know what type of variables you have and that you're, to, in order to get the answers that you uh, need. Okay, another one is a Boolean. This one is true or false. Not a stores it as a one or a zero. But I can put in true or I can put in false. So it's just another name for like saying it's a zero or a one. Okay, now if I do say it's true, let's just go ahead and look at the type. Okay, it says that it's a logical. Okay, a Boolean or a logical. Um, and I should change this to logical here. All right, so there we have um, a one or zero true or false. Now, the nice thing about this is that if you have five times answer, okay, it's going to give you five. So it just kind of substitutes a one or a zero in there. All right, comments, they're just words, okay, in, to help you explain what's happening. Now, comments, one of the things I found with beginner programmers, they don't add a lot of comments to their program. The nice thing in Jupyter Notebooks or Jupyter Lab, you can put comments in here, uh, insert them as uh, you know different types. You can make this markdown, for example, and then when you run it, you can see that it's just a comment like this up above. And you run those, you render the comments again by doing just Control Enter. Or if you want to set it back to code, you can go back to code and then run it. And then it's going to put that variable into the program. Okay, but if you're just in a MATLAB or Octave program, a .m file, you want to use the percent symbol. And then anything after that is just going to be a comment. It's going to be ignored by the program. All right, rules of variables. Okay, so um, there's a couple rules here you can start with underscores or letters but numbers are not allowed all right so let's just go ahead and um, take a look at this now we're going to have some errors here invalid constant left hand side of assignment all right but if i do v375 then it's going to be okay now this one okay this one is going to it's really, there's certain symbols that are allowed, um, so I just recommend just leaving, uh, leaving those out. Okay, you're going to see unexpected results if you put in uh, other symbols. I just recommend underscores. You can put in numbers in the middle, okay, but uh, they can't be leading the variable name. Now let's look at variable properties as well. We did a little bit of that with the class. Okay, we, if you just print out the type of variable, all right, and you can do tests, for example, here I'll just do test one, test two, and then I can say, is test one equal to class test two? All right, and um, hmm, non conformant arguments. All right, so they are not equal to each other. But I don't think I can do the double equal sign there to get a true or false. So let's just do, we'll cover if statements later. Uh, then we'll display yes. And else we'll display uh, no. All right, let's try that. Okay, so it looks like these are going to be strings, so we'd have to do use a different method uh, to compare them. All right, so let's go ahead and just um, convert these. Okay, you can you can test the class of each of them. You know, the class of test one. Okay, and that's going to be a double. So even though you put it in as three, it's going to be a double. If you want to make it an integer again, just do int. 32. All right, variable usage. Uh, 
variables could be used in math or when you're trying to show a result. So for example, you can't add five and degrees Celsius together. You can, it's just gonna give you some unexpected results. All right, so let's go ahead and change this so we get the result that we want. Okay, so here we have an int to string. Okay, and that's going to produce the uh, a string for us. If we had left that out like this, then it's going to give us some symbol here, but it's not going to be the right result. All right, so we can do num to string or int to string and then come up with uh, the result. If we want to put a space in here, you can. Okay, so you can see five degrees Celsius. All right, let's do an activity now. We'll make one variable for every type of variable of character, integer, double, and Boolean. All right, so go ahead and just practice. Uh, you can put in your name, for example. You could put in uh, something about yourself, like um, your favorite number. I don't necessarily have one, but I'll put in 16. All right, and then a double. All right, and I'll put in 3.2 and a Boolean false. All right, so there they are. If you don't want to display them, go ahead and put a semicolon behind it uh, to not have it repeat and print the output. All right, you'll notice here that if I look at the class of these again, the integer is going to be a double. So if you really want to make that an integer, you could do an int eight on up. And uh, that's how many bits are going to be used to store that integer. So it's going to give you a, you know, typically you just want to use something like a 64 bit integer or just store it as a double. All right, so try making your own variable to store a chicken's name. Make sure to change the assignment name from your variable to what, is, what the important information so you remember. Okay, so uh, this is, gets back to our lab exercise that we're going to be doing at the end of the course. All right, and, um, you know, I used to have some chickens uh, when I was young, and... Um, I'll go ahead and just put in uh, one of the, the names. I named uh, three of them uh, I had, and one of them I named Thanks, and the other one Giving, and then the other one Dinner. So I'd call them, uh, and they would come running to me. I'd say, come here, Thanksgiving dinner, and the three of them would come running to me. So um, kind of a cruel name, but uh, never ended up eating them. They were my pets. All right. Um, all right, I have a true here. Now, true is undefined. One of the things here is that they have to be lowercase. All right, and then um, let's go ahead and just uh, mix the X and Y, but let's make those strings instead. So num to string, num to string. All right, and you can see that it just added, uh, instead of adding those together like this, I've got to do an array. I'm always thinking like Python or something when I'm doing these. Okay, so here I put a one in front, and then I have these values right here. So I've added them together, but just as character arrays, and just concatenated them. All right, let's go on to the next one. Connect the USB communication cable to the Arduino. Okay, again, the white power cable is not needed for this exercise. We're going to calculate the average of three temperature values and then compute, um, you know, with this formula right here. All right, so let's go ahead and do this one. Um, I have, you know, these printed out. So let's just go ahead and run it. And we're going to display some of those temperatures. It's going to connect to the Arduino and then it put out uh, those values, three in a row. You can see the temperature sensor is just a little bit different. Every time you read it, uh, there's gonna be a little bit of fluctuation just based on the voltages. All right, so let's go ahead and store those as variables. All right, I'll just say that I have T1, I'll do TC1. 
Okay, TC2. And there's gonna be there are gonna be more efficient ways of doing this later, but for now, let's go ahead and just start uh, with this. All right, and then we want to calculate and display the average. Now again, I'm just going through these. These are exercises for you, should, so you should try them first. Don't look at this video until you've struggled with it. All right, TC1 plus TC2. You can put it on the parentheses just to show what you're going to be dividing by. And I'll divide that by three. All right, if I do this, it's just going to display the output temperature and the average. Now, all of them were the same. Let's see if I can run it again. See if I get a slightly uh, different temperature there. All right, there we go. We got something that uh, confirms that we're doing the averaging correctly. All right, that's it for the variables. Up next, we're going to be talking about printing and displaying values and ways to format the output from uh, MATLAB or Octave.